Climate action matters to us all and it begins at home. Today we're going to delve into the world of renewable energy and look at the assessment and installation phase of your heat pump journey. With me is Mark from Independent Energy Consultants 2 EVA and our Daikin expert, Mark. Okay, Mark, let's start with the basics. Why should a homeowner get a technical assessment done on their home? So where a homeowner has an existing house, if they want to take advantage of the SCI heat pump grant, they have to get a technical assessment done to determine what the heat loss indicator is of the house. The heat loss indicator has to be below a specific threshold of energy in order for the homeowner to qualify. And what we do when we do the technical assessment is we go in, we take all of our measurements and calculations and our observations, and we determine what the current HLI or heat loss indicator is for the house. If they're at the threshold level, they'll automatically qualify for the grant. And if they're not, then we can give them advice as to how to get the house ready for the heat pump install and get the HLI down. If it's a new build, then we can also help them with the heat loss indicator. We can then share that information to the homeowner in either an existing situation or for a new build. They'll pass on our reports to the heat pump supplier or installer, and they can size the correct heat pump for the house. So you're almost like the boots on the ground for the heat pump companies and stuff like that. You're getting that information to them, to people building houses, so they know exactly what size of a heat pump to get. Correct. I mean, we're accredited by the SEI to complete technical assessments. So our multi multidisciplinary team can go in, we can do the various surveys that are required in order to identify this. We cover most of the country in, in what we do. Um, and we are that link between us, the homeowner, and the supplier or designer and all of the heat pump. And if they get their assessment back and they need to do lots and lots of different things, or let's say they're very far below where they need to be, you can advise them on what to do and, you know, what steps they need to take. In terms of the actual reports themselves, they're very technical. So our responsibility is to take very technical reports, supply them to the customer, but to also give them a plain English version of what they're, what they're getting. It's like any very technical report. It makes a lot of sense for people in the industry, but it can be very confusing for a lot of homeowners. So what we'll do is we will take the report, explain to them what the report means, explain to them the relevant sections within the report. We'll also then give them specific advice in relation to if they are going to apply for grants, where to find the grants process on the SEI website, how to apply for the grant. And for example, at the time that they apply for the grant for the heat pump, they must upload the actual technical assessment as well. How do you get that information now? So you're coming into the house, what's involved in getting a technical assessment done? Okay, so we set up an appointment with the, with the customer so that we can do a physical survey of the building. So we turn up, we'll photograph the building, we'll photograph lots of information that's in the building, the type of heating system, the heat distribution system, ventilation points, chimneys and so on. We'll draw the building and we'll make a number of observations as we do that survey, which could take anything from an hour upwards. Um, once we do the actual technical assessment, we can establish what the heat loss indicator is. We do a geometric energy model of the building and that will help us to determine the inputs that we need to put into the SEI software for the purposes of identifying what, if any, works have to be done to the house. And when you're going through this journey, do you support people the whole way through? Do you have a service where you do that? Or is it just in get the assessment? No, I mean, there's normally at least two, if not three, contact points with, with the customer. We'll do the initial assessment. We'll talk them through. We'll give them the, the required reports. We will explain to them what the reports mean. We'll explain to them what the grants are, how to avail of the grants, where to apply for the grants. We will explain, obviously, that all of the works that are done that are grant applicable have to be done by an SEI registered installer. Then during the actual journey itself, whilst the work is being done, it's very common the customers will come back to us and ask us relevant questions about types of insulation or maybe contractors or there's an, any number of questions that might come up and we're, we'll happily deal with them through the process. And then at the very end, in order to claim the grants, we have to go back and confirm that all the works have been done, possibly resurvey the building if an extension has been, has been added. We help them to complete the SEI grant paperwork. And normally what we will do is we'll get all of the grant paperwork from the home, homeowner that have been filled out by the various SEI contractors, confirm that they're filled out correctly. And it's very common that we would then post all, that collective paperwork back to the SEI for the homeowners. Would you find out a lot from one of these assessments or are you really only kind of gearing it towards people who are looking for grants? Uh, no, I mean, to empower people with information is, is a wonderful thing. People have a curiosity about what they could or should do to make their house more comfortable. A lot of times when we do work with people, they don't talk about the amount of money that they saved after the fact. It's about how much more energy efficient and comfortable the house is. That's the big initial thing for people. It's the comfort difference. 
between before and after. So yeah, it's, it's quite common that we will deal with a lot of people who might for one reason or another decide not to go for grants, but merely want to upgrade their own home for their own energy efficiency and their own comfort. Yeah, no, that's because I think I'd probably, at least initially, that would be where I would be coming from. I'd love to know, you know, what I could do, and um, not necessarily just in a grant capacity. So Martin, we know that an air to water heat pump has two main units, one outside and one inside. Where does the inside one normally get put? So typically the indoor unit would, wherever ever possible, be fitted in the hot press. It would replace the existing cylinder. Um, there are units that can be integrated with kitchen units if you don't have a hot press. There's even a wall mounted version that could go into a, a press of some description and you'd have a separate hot water tank. So when you have an, a retrofit, you know, it's nice to think you can fit them in in different places. So the outside one, what limitations have you got on the outside one? So again, there's different sanitary units depending on how big the property is. Um, the main thing with the outdoor units is they're fitted where air can travel through them. They will stand off the wall about 300 millimetres and it's critical that air gets allowed to be passed through them without recycling. So we can't go boxing them in or putting covers over them or anything like that because efficiency will be lost and running costs will go up. So once the installation's complete, this is where your expertise kicks in. So what happens after that? The first thing is that the unit needs commissioning and that needs to be done by either a Daikin engineer or a fully trained Daikin installer. And that commissioning engineer is going to set up the parameters of the machine, set it up for the installation that is done because there's many different types of installation. It will set it for hopefully the, the occupancy of the house and the lifestyle of the people living in the house. So you have the grant work done um, you come back and then do a final assessment. How do you get that final BER upgrade? What's involved in that when you actually come back and assess it at the end? So we would look back at the technical assessment form that we've done for the client. We have supplied that to them. They have to upload that when they apply for the grant. That's very important. We will look at the works that have been done, confirms that the works that have been done are in conformity with the technical assessment that we gave to the customer. We will reach out and work with the contractors then to get, gather the relevant information because we have to get very technical, detailed uh, information such as U-value calculations. There's an assessment form that we have to, done, have to have done by the heat pump supplier. We collate all that information together to make sure it's done correctly, to make sure it accurately reflects what's been done in the house. We can then do the final BER and complete the assessment and grant paperwork for the SEI. So how do homeowners get in touch with technical advisors? Well, on the SCI website, there is a full list of uh, registered technical assessors. Um, alternatively, they can reach out to someone directly like us, and we have information on our website on how to get an assessment done. So what kind of typical scenarios come up with people? Like, are there certain ones that come up time and time again when you're doing assessments? Well, broadly speaking, our customers would fall into three areas. People who have built a house since 2004 onwards normally wouldn't have to do many, if any, upgrades in order to qualify for the heat pump grant. By virtue of the um, building regulations of when the building was built, they might have to do very little, if anything, to the building in order to qualify for the SEI grant. Other people then are looking at what's called a shallow retrofit. They just want to do some measures or some grant upgrades, which typically would be wall insulation and attic insulation. And again, we'll determine what the current heat loss indicator is, what the difference that that would make to the heat loss indicator, and bring them along to show them how to qualify for the grant. Other clients then are looking at a much, much deeper retrofit on a building. They could be stripping it right back. They could be buying an almost derelict building and or they, they might have a building they're going to strip right back and add an extension. And we'll amalgamate all of that into the energy model of the building to determine what, what has to be done. And what kind of aftercare requirements are there? The units do require servicing. Obviously, there's some capital investment here. And the machines do require servicing every 12 months um, to be checked over and make sure that they're running as efficiently as they should do. So explain to me a little bit about Daikin's Stand By Me and warranty. So Daikin's Stand By Me is, is our warranty platform, but first and foremost, the installer is going to register that install installation on Stand By Me. Then we require the homeowner to register their details. They will get an extra six months warranty by registering and they will get notified when their unit requires servicing. Okay, so what kind of queries do you get from customers? Because I'm assuming there's quite a lot of buzz around this type of thing at the moment. You're getting a lot of people inquiring about getting these assessments done so they can get their grants. Well, I think what's happened is it's 
it's absolutely understood now that heat pumps work very efficiently in an energy efficient house, okay? So we go in and we determine, is the house energy efficient? If not, what do they have to do to make it more energy efficient? Most people are very, very happy with that kind of understanding, the bringing together of the two technologies and what they're really looking for is a more energy efficient house and something that's more comfortable for themselves. As part of that whole process then, even from the time they apply for the grant and start to get the various works done, we're at the end of the phone to help them if they have queries about various products or materials, uh, because sometimes they'll go down and the material might be available, we can give them alternatives on, on materials, and then at the back end, we'll go in and do the final uh, assessment for them. I'm sure for homeowners using a heat pump instead of a traditional boiler will be a big change. What kind of advice do you have for people? It's a very big change, and I look at it like it's a, it's a tortoise and the hare. The hare being the, the fossil fuel boiler, the tortoise being the heat pump. We know which one there is. It's very beneficial to run a heat pump for longer at a lower temperature. It's more efficient, um, and what we're trying to do is build up the thermal mass in the building. So the floors, the walls, everything's at the temperature that you want. Um, and the building will retain that. Whereas in the past with gas and oil boilers, you know, it was quite common practice, turn the boiler on for an hour, you get a, a blast of heat, then you turn it off and very quickly the house cools down. That's not the case with the heat pump. We're, we're trying to achieve a steady state of temperature throughout the house and maintain it. And that makes the heat pump more efficient and obviously cheaper to run. And quite a lot more comfortable, I would assume, for people living in the house. Because I think that's something people need to get their head around, is that it's not this thing that your house is going to be colder, like noticeably colder even. It's just that you're not going to have these blasts of heat and then the place will be freezing for a couple of hours because you can't leave the oil on for long enough. Because that's what happens. And even in oil heating, when you don't have a smart home and you don't have everything scheduled in little timers, you wake up in the morning and the place can be cold. It can be quite cold. And then you have to go and get the heating back on for another hour while everyone's getting ready for work. And it, it would be nice to have a constant. And it is constant. And it really depends on what controls have been fitted on the system. Again, there's many different types of systems out there. Thank you to Mark and Martin for their valuable insights. I have learned so much. Ireland's move to renewable energy is progressing and you can play your part. For more information, visit daikin.ie.